I am Dr. Kanal Sitaram, Senior Consultant in Cardiology at Apollo Hospital, Secunderabad. Today, it's my pleasant duty to introduce a very senior colleague of mine, Dr. N. Somasekar Reddy, who is a senior consultant in orthopedic surgery in Apollo Hospitals since the last three decades and we have been very, very good friends. So what exactly do you mean by total knee replacement? Actually, uh, by birth, all the bones have a soft lining at the end of the bone, which we see like a white cap. And uh, with the age, sometimes with sports injuries, that white cap gets worn out. So we have lost what we were having from birth because there is no lining anymore. While walking, there is no proper lubrication. The bone may rub against the other bone and people start getting pain because of that one. We call that as like osteoarthritis. Now what we do is that whatever we lost, the lining of the joint, we are going to put some material in the place of the lining which was there before and which is partly worn out and damaged. So we are actually putting something in the place which we already have for number of years but we are not taking away any part of the body uh, or any part of the knee and throwing it out. So in most of our families we have our parents or grandparents who are aging, uncles, aunts. So a lot of them have joint uh, troubles. So when do you know that this particular uh, patient is to be sent for a knee replacement? That's a good question actually because when somebody starts getting pain, you know, the people uh, gets diagnosed as osteoarthritis. But the treatment of osteoarthritis, for our sake, we actually divide that into four stages. The first stage may start as early as 40, 45 years. And uh, the, at that stage, the simple modification of lifestyle, simple pain medication, simple exercises, and if somebody is heavy, definitely to lose the weight, will help. So the so-called osteoarthritis in that stage doesn't need anything more than that. But when it goes to stage 2 and stage 3, that is the time the white cap joint lining which I was mentioning before will start really getting structurally abnormal by wear and tear. That is the time we need to repair and protect the remaining uh, lining so that it will live longer. That means the joint will survive for longer time without needing any further major treatments. So to actually prolong the life of that uh, uh, cap, nowadays we are having a sub-specialty called orthobiologics where there is a plasma therapy, stem cell treatment and other lubricant injections. But these things work only if the limb is not deformed and if the patient is not very heavy. If the patient is heavy and the limb deformed, these sort of reparative techniques won't help really. And uh, they have some limited role and they are actually having good impact in only certain patients. But when we see a patient who is in stage 4, means there is no lining left in most part of the knee joint where there is nothing to repair. So we can't repair anything there which is already gone. At that stage, there is no other option but to have a joint replacement. Because the lining has gone, you need to put a new lining there for the patient's knee joint to work well and patient to walk well. So that in stage 4, there is no controversy that the only treatment which is going to help is a joint replacement. So you think uh, once the joint replacement surgery is done, the end of the problem and he will never have any problem or are there any limitations? If we do for any reason in a relatively younger patients, our own knee has our own, uh, there is time limit and with the wear and tear, uh, the natural lining cap is getting worn out. Similarly, the artificial lining inside the bone, the plastic insert, that also can get worn out. So in certain younger patients and in some reasons in other patients also, we may have to redo. So these joints, we cannot say that they are forever. But if we do surgery in a post-retirement age group, say 
and the patient remains active but taking appropriate care of the joint, yes, that joint can live along with the patient for the rest of their life. So it may not give any further problem. But if there are any accidents, fractures, the joint can get damaged and then we may need to do redo surgeries. Sometimes due to poor bone quality, the lining which we put inside the joint may get loose also, in which case we may have to go back again and do the surgery again using a different types of linings and implants. So I think uh, the whole thing depends on the strength of the material we are using inside the joint. So what are the new materials which are coming up which are likely to change its uh, scenario? Yeah, the new materials especially there is a quite a bit of research on the plastic component to increase the life of the plastic component with uh, antioxidant impregnated plastics they are coming and that is the reason uh, nowadays we are hearing uh, some special equipment uh, related material including ceramic which on the laboratory are showing promising results that they will last longer. And uh, so many times I see outside the operation theatre a lot of uh, patients, relatives are waiting very eagerly for the patient who has gone for surgery to come back. How much time does it take for you to operate on a knee replacement patient? Yeah, that's true. Um, there's a lot of anxiety on the waiting uh, patient relatives. But actually, once the patient goes in, there is a lot of process before we can start the process. The cleaning, anesthesia, the preparation and the actual surgical time may not take more than an hour or hour and a half in most of the cases. But actually for the patient's relatives, patient has gone into the theatre and uh, altogether it's taken 3-4 hours for them to see the patient again. Yeah, that's the uh, point of anxiety. But the actual surgery most of the time may not actually uh, go beyond one hour. And that's very interesting to see that the actual operation will be lasting short period, but the preparation and careful techniques that are used to clean the area and all is very important. Yes, sir. Second thing is when the patient comes back to the room after surgery, everybody is eager to see when is he going to stand up, when is he going to walk again, and what is the normal time they take to get to recover into a walking and when do they go on discharge? The minute the patient recovers from the anesthetic effects, that means they regain the strength and sensation in the operated part. Usually may take uh, 6 to 8 hours after surgery and we are perfectly happy for the patient to stand and walk. We have many patients, uh, if they had surgery in the morning, many patients walking in the same evening with the help of a physiotherapist. And if not, almost more than 90% of the people walking the next day and uh, again more than 50% of the people will be going home the next day which is about 24 hours after the operation 50% of the patients they go home and rest may take a day or two more that depends on how fit they are before surgery if the patient is very fit before surgery and energetic and agile I'm sure I don't have any objection for them to get discharged on the same evening because they can take care of themselves but if the patient is slightly elderly with some medical issues where we need to control the pain properly uh, with proper uh, medication and the anesthetic uh, effect and the physician effect, those are the people may need to stay for a day or two more in the hospital because of their comorbid conditions. I think that where you made a very good point that it depends on the fitness of the patient who before the, his injury and that makes him how fast he can recover back. Now, are there any conditions where there is a uh, operation to be done and uh, but you are high risk patient or where you don't want to operate what are the such conditions where you say i am not keen to operate on this patient yes sir first of all if there is the area where we are going to operate for some reason it is not clean and there are some medical conditions of the skin there uh, through which we have to go we can't operate on those patients second thing is medical uh, uh, problems Anybody above 50-51 years of age, any patients coming to us with the requirement of uh, replacement, unless we get a clearance from the physician, if they, especially if they are diabetic, and the cardiologist, they have to get checked thoroughly by these two specialists and they have to say that yes, this patient is suitable for operation and they can withstand the stresses of the operation. Only when 
they say okay they give green signal then we are we will take the patient for surgery and uh, the recovery depends on how good they are before surgery so i think uh, what you said is correct i find so many patients who are going for orthopedic surgery coming for cardiac fitness and i now understand the importance of having a thorough checkup at uh, most important thing is how do the people who are overweight how do they react um we calculate that in the terms of bmi so if somebody's bmi is up to say 30 32 is okay we can easily manage but if somebody is going beyond 32 33 then there can be issues with the wound healing and in some centers if the bmi is more than 40 they won't be operated instead they will be referred to bariatric surgeons and other weight relieving uh, uh, measures because it is a known confirmed scientific fact that obese people do not that well after surgery the recovery will be longer and the wound there can be wound healing problems and they may not get as good result as a fit patient so if somebody is very heavy we are very cautious uh, other issue seems to be coming up is osteoporosis you mentioned osteoporosis earlier what exactly is this osteoporosis is it a medical problem or a surgical problem yes sir osteoporosis is like in simple terms is loss of bone density if we hold the bone strong and if we squeeze it we know how strong it is in an exaggerated version say for example if we can hold the bone and squeeze it if you can break it that means the bone is very weak isn't it so we grade that osteoporosis into uh, early and late stages if patients are uh, having an osteoporosis with other complications i just mentioned that we are going to use the lining of the uh, joint with a specialized material metal material at the end of the day that metal material has to sit at the end of the bone but the material where it is sitting on the bone if that bone itself is not strong there is no way the artificial material can actually stick to that bone so if patients are osteoporotic then the loosening of the implant can happen we need to take special precautions and also we need to use special implants to deal with those patients and more important all those patients at least in my hand we treat osteoporosis first before doing a replacement surgery ah there's a very nice uh, suggestion that osteoporosis has to be looked into secondly uh, i find that after surgery some patients recover very well and quickly they get back to their duties and very fast whereas in some patients in spite of the best attempts by doctors and nursing care still they do not come back to normalcy they'll continue to have pain and difficulty in walking motility so what exactly are the reasons why some patients do not seem to do well after such a nice operation like a joint replacement surgery actually there are so many factors in in that uh, category and one thing which i already covered is how fit the patient is before surgery if the patient is uh, very fit before surgery i am sure most of the time they all do very well if the patient is not really very fit and with so many comorbid factors they may not do that well or that fast after surgery even the most of them eventually will, will recover well and uh, uh how good the pain control after surgery is very important for their recovery and we do take special care here in our hospital to keep the pain to bare minimum following surgery which will really affect their post op recovery period other important thing is physiotherapy physiotherapy is a crucial component in the recovery of the patient when it is used judiciously if the physiotherapy is done according to the fitness of the patient they all do well but as a rush thing you know we have to finish physiotherapy in 10 days 15 days if somebody gets too much physiotherapy too soon actually it can be counterproductive that can increase the pain and that may not really help improving the movement of the joint and those are the patients may not do that well if uh, no too much physiotherapy is done so yes there are so many factors and all things needs to be 
taken into consideration uh, for the recovery of the patient? I think uh, that was the last question and uh, I thank you. Thank you. So much, Dr. Samsegregaru, for throwing light on such an important subject. And I hope you continue to operate and bring uh, smiles to a lot of patients who are suffering with a lot of joint disorders. Thank, thank you so much for sparing thank your you. time. Bye.